think the hardest part about being a teenager is social standards that we have. Um, you know, we're all expected, especially being a girl, we're expected to look a certain way and act a certain way. Our generation, just how we've grown up into it. Technology, you can access literally anything on the phone. Like on social media, you can just see what all your friends are posting, doing, and it just makes you want to go in the wrong direction. It's like comparing, a lot of like comparing on social media, like you see like a really pretty girl. I wish I was like her, yeah. like insecurity. As a teenager, like if you're not partying or like drinking, or you're just like not the cool kids or you're not like fitting in. Influence of like drugs and stuff like that. I, I can barely go in the bathroom without like a ton of kids just being in there doing drugs and stuff. Feeling like you have to fit in with everyone else. Everyone's constantly judging you, what you do, everyone's always looking. It's just hard not to like play into it and do what everybody else is doing. There are so many movements that like are trying to like influence us and get us to think a certain way. It's hard to you know listen to all these voices at the same time. It's hard because you don't want your friends to like think you're weird. There's like so much pressure to do bad things and it's like it's hard to be like a Christian and a teenager because like you're trying to, to do all the things right, but you're also trying to like fit in. Finding really who you are as a person whenever you have like, you know, society and like your friends and family telling you like all these things that you should do and like who you should be. It's hard to say no to some things, um, especially when everyone else around you is saying yeah. It's not an accident that you're here. It's not an accident that I am here. We are here, all of us, teenagers, counselors, staff, we're all here by a divine appointment. Almighty God, who keeps your heart beating, who gave you life, wants to meet just with you. taking me to church how long ago uh november november it's only been like two days or three days and like it seemed like we family already so like it, it was it's real cool but when we come to beach retreat like we're all focusing on one thing and that's growing your relationship stronger with christ we didn't just come here to have fun and do all that stuff we came here time out we came here to worship god amen Be still and know that I am God. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. 
In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will order my prayer to you and eagerly watch. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. Hello? Hello. Hi, my Hello. Hello. I'm the Maddie. Oh, I'm the Maddie. Now, um, have you come to Beach Street before? No, this is actually my first time. I'm really excited to be here. It's been going really good, actually. I've had a really fun time here. So I heard about Beach Retreat from my friend Chase. At first I was hesitant, I was like, I don't, I don't really know. Chase called me, I think he called me two days before we had to load the bus. He was like, are you coming? And I was like, man, all right, let's do it, I'll come. When I moved into high school, I switched to 1463, and that's when I finally found like a real church home for me. It was nice growing up at the church. It gave us a lot of stability. I made a lot of poor decisions. I'm gonna say that. I made a really a lot of poor decisions. I struggled with a lot of addiction problems um, and a lot of family problems. I actually was in juvie for a little bit, and I was on probation for a long while. I was scared. I remember um, crying in the back of a cop car all the way to Angleton while the cop told me that there's still chance, you can still turn it around. And it didn't sink in until probably like my night in when I sat there in that cell for 24 hours by myself. I've been playing football since I was four. It's like a coping mechanism. Like when nothing goes right on this earth or in the world or with anybody, I go to the field and I know I ain't got to think about nothing, just play, have fun. I recently came back from an ACL tear in my knee. So we went to the doctor and the doctor told me I blew up my ACL, MCL, and my meniscus. So I was out for 12 months. Without football, I really haven't found a second path in life. So it's like I kind of lost myself. I wanted, I wanted to be thin and I wanted to be like, the other girls, and I wanted to... I truly just wanted to fit in somewhere. When people are like, oh, you're beautifully and wonderfully made, or like, God loves you, like, it genuinely made me uncomfortable to hear that, because I couldn't believe it. And in freshman year, it got really bad, and my grandma was the only person to notice. She encouraged me through the word of God, which is so, just so her. And she's like, this is how God sees you and this is how I see you. Like, please feel your body. Please stop working out. Like, please just take a moment to realize like how amazing you are despite what your body looks like. I've struggled with a lot of family issues and for a while it felt like I had nobody. And so it was really difficult whenever I got there and I literally had no one. People are, have always viewed me as this girl that is struggling and will never get better and will never be different. I definitely wouldn't have called myself a Christian because I felt like I didn't deserve to be called a Christian after everything I've done and everything, all the mistakes I've made. I didn't feel like I was almost worthy enough. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you struggled with a lot of shame from outside people for your choices. Yeah. A lot. How do you believe God views you, truly? He sees me as a lost kid that has a very big heart and that is struggling to find her way. It's a pretty good childhood. It was just me, my mom, and my sister. We had a lot of fun. I was, I was pretty bad, but my mom still dealt with me. My dad is not in my life. Well, I don't know who he is. My mom knows who he is, but my mom told me that he did come, come to a few games and watch me play, but he never stayed after to see me or talk to me. Do want to see him, but it's like, if he don't want to be there for me, it's, I ain't gonna force nobody. 
and May of last year I lost my grandma and that was really hard for me the way she passed was super just like super unsettling and she followed Christ with her whole heart her whole life everything she did and she showed Christ love like no other and then to see her go like that in the way she did was really hard for me and so about May to I want to say December I was just angry I was super angry I took it out on the church I stopped going like I was just like my solution was just not to believe in December I actually went into recovery for an eating disorder Get the thing is like recovery is hard but going back to real life is harder and like getting thrown back into the real world so when I came back I was like like I put everything I put the anger aside I was like I'm not even worried about that anymore I just want to know who this Jesus is I came asking a lot of questions a lot of tough questions just being scared just like not like wanting to let go of that anger because like as bad as it sounds like you get comfortable in it is there anything in your life you'd like to change? Think about it. Anything at all you'd like to th change? Some things in life cannot be changed. And I'll tell you a secret, you cannot change your own life yourself. Nobody can. Only God can change your life and my life, but we have to decide what needs to be changed most of all. For a life change to happen, I have to cooperate with God's desire to change me. Let's stay with that. Would you read that with me? Let's read it all together, would you? For a life change to happen, I have to cooperate with God's desire to change me. And see, a lot of these things that we like to change, they begin almost innocently. You know, we just stumble into them or suddenly that we, you know, have a thought and it becomes an act and an act becomes a habit. A, a, a habit becomes an addiction. An addiction becomes a lifestyle. And you see, you got to start, young people, way down in the beginning of all this, in the little things before they explode into big things that will totally change your life. And then that's what we've been singing. Will you stay where you are? In other words, will you and I continue to have these things that we need, no need to be changed? Will we stay where we are? And the song says, play the game and be a fraud. Just game play through life. Be a fraud. Don't be real. Will you stay where you are? That's our challenge here. I ask the question, will you stay where you are? And my answer is no. I wonder what your answer is. We've got these things up here. Will you answer like I do? Will you stay where you are? No. no. So we ask the question, Will you stay where you are? We have said almost in unanimously, we've answered that no, and then we discovered, well, how does change take place? It's not easy. And we've discovered, I hope, you can't change yourself. I can't change myself. Nobody else can change you. Nobody on this world. Only God God has the power and the ability to change you and to change me. Nobody else has that power. Nobody else has that ability. So we better get in on what God wants to produce through your life and through my life. So we went through a couple of things as to how change takes place. First of all, we said it's a crisis, didn't we? It's a crisis. Something happens that wakes us up. Or maybe a process of events, and we say, you know, I'm not what I ought to be. I'm not what I'm going to be. I, 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 I'm broken. I'm hurting. And look what happened to me, and I wasn't responsible for it. Look what I did, and I was responsible for it. So we got all kinds of pain and health and brokenness in any gathering you want to find on the planet. And it takes something to wake us up, a crisis. Also, it is a process. 
It's not just, remember, lightning strikes and I'm a brand new person. Change and then a process that takes place. And we grow and mature and we realize as we deal with things and learn from things and experience things, we're becoming all in all, hopefully and prayerfully, under God in Christ, the man or woman that God wants you to become. And then the next part of our song, will you reach for a star? Will you reach for the star? And that's the bright and morning star, which is Jesus Christ. Will you reach for that star? And the answer is yes. Will you reach for that star with me? Yes. yes. Will you stay where you are? No. Will you reach for the star? Yes. yes. What does it take to reach for Jesus, to, to join him, to get on his team, to become everything that God planned for you and me to become? What does it take? What does it take? It takes two things. You die to self and you live for God. You know, when you look in the mirror and do that, and don't look at how you look at it, just look in there and what do you see? You see somebody that God loves. He really loves each and every one of us, and he loves us to the love no matter what you've done, what you haven't done, what you've said, how you've acted, doesn't matter. He loves you and me with a love that will never let us go. Isn't that great? He loves us with a love that he'll never release you. But also, when you look in that mirror, you may see someone that's gotten off the track, that's wandered away. You may see one, someone that's all about I, 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 me, 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 my, 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 my. Does that sound like anybody here who's all involved in themselves? God loves us. When he sees you and me just in all the I, me, mine business, he knows that your life will not make sense and you'll just wander off in a world of ego and selfishness and it will end up in a world that is empty and without meaning. It doesn't matter if you become a billionaire. It doesn't matter if you end up sleeping under a bridge. That will be the story of your life. If it's all about number one, Jesus is the garbage collector, and he takes all of our trash and our garbage on himself on the cross. And the Bible says, I was crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. What does that mean? It means when Jesus took all that garbage, a part of that garbage was your trash and my trash, right? He took that on himself. And therefore, that's when God could no longer look on him. Turned, even God turned his back because he was filled with your garbage and my garbage were put into a perfect person. He was on a cross. And guess what? Every single one of us here, we were on that cross too. Did you know it? Because all of our garbage was on that cross, and it was put into Jesus Christ. It's what I would like to do as a demonstration, but we can't do it. I'd like to have a torch and put all of our trash, my garbage, your garbage, and set a fire in there. That's what happens, and it's all burned up, and it's all gone. And do you know what God does? Not only on that cross did Jesus forgive us, but God forgets. I don't forget. You don't forget. God forgets we've ever sinned. Isn't that amazing? On that cross, remember who the Father is? The Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Father is God without flesh. 
God the Son is God with flesh. God the Holy Spirit is God in flesh. So when we receive Jesus Christ into our life, the Holy Spirit is there giving us power to live a life that has meaning and significance in accordance with how God has designed every one of us. God is an architect, and he's designed each one of us. So there on the cross, all of our garbage now is taken away and now we're, we're free, but then there's something else. There's something else. Die to self, selfishness, we've done that. And the last thing is to live for God, to live for God. How do we do that? We have to all, first of all, we have to bring him into our lives. John 1, 12, very clearly says, those who receive him, that's Jesus, to them he gives the power to become sons and daughters, children of God. We enter into the family of God and the Holy Spirit, remember the Holy Spirit is God with skin on top of it, that's you and me. When we invite him to come in, we receive that gift and all of a sudden he gives us a brand new life. He gives us the power, and it's the resurrection power of Jesus to live that life. We've asked the question, will you stay where you are? Will you reach for a star? And we've answered that. Will you stay where you are? No. Will you reach for a star? Yes. But the rest of it says, this can be not necessarily will be, can be victory's hour. So therefore, we can say or ask, what time is it? And we can say, victory's hour. Do it with me. Victory's yeah. hour. Will you stay where you are? No. Will you reach for a star? Yes. This is Victory's hour. What time is it? Victory's hour. Many here and many more tonight have decided, I want that new life. I want to be forgiven. I want to have a fresh start. I want everything to be put behind me. I want to know God in reality, not in formality, but genuinely. Be not conformed to this world, Paul says in Romans 12. Be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Isn't that a miraculous thing? I was thinking this way. Christ came in, and now I'm thinking this way. And there's renewal of your heart. That's where your passions are. That's where your emotions are. Then there's a renewal of the decisions you make with your body, your hands, your feet, the entire reference of your body. It's all made brand new. And we say, Thank God for that. So I'm telling you, when you sell out to Jesus Christ, young men and young women, I can tell you, your family, your friends may not understand, but there will be a new significance to you that you've never felt before. We invite Christ in our life. We repent. He gives us a new life. Then we have a story to tell in a bi biography. That's what baptism is. When somebody goes under the water and comes back, they're preaching a sermon. Imitation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in obedience to the divine command. I baptize you, my brother, my sister, buried with Christ unto death. That's the old person. Rise again to walk in unison of life. That's the new person. Buried with all the sin and trash and garbage, rise again clean in unison of life. That's a beautiful sermon. And you know what? I baptized thousands of people, but I've never had a single one who said, boy, I'm sure sorry I did that. It is humbling. It is humbling. It is humbling that you go for all those people and you put your flag all the way up to heaven and say, I'm on your side, God. I'm a child of yours. 
and the rest of your life begins to open up and develop because of a crisis, and then there's a process we grow and mature. You say, well, I don't want to do that because I may not can stay changed. <laughs> Let me tell you what. The way we stay changed, first of all, is declare ourselves. That's baptism, and that's profession of faith publicly in Christ, and that's basically what it's all about as we preach that sermon. And we stay changed because it says, this can be victory's hour. Claim his grace. What is that? It's carriage. It's a gift. He said, claim what has happened in your life that you received Jesus Christ you didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it. You'll never deserve it. You'll never earn it. You'll never be good enough to do it. It is a gift to you of eternal life forever and life now. Dr. Young talked about how crisis can be your biggest turning point in finding the Lord. It really spoke to me because that's exactly what happened. This week, he's just giving me a safe space to like, ask the questions and be honest and open and ask for help and be vulnerable. I want to go home, and I want my parents to be like, something changed. That's our daughter. God is changing me into a better person. And before this week, I really wasn't as smiling or confident to talk to people. I was shy in front of the cameras. But now it's like, I don't know, I'm more open. I just feel a dramatic change, and I like it. down with like a big old smile <laughs> it was closing one chapter opening another and it was it, there was a lot of emotions I used to you know feel very excluded and everything like I constantly tell myself now I'm not the only one my freedom, your stripes my healing our praise King Jesus glory to God in heaven your These past few days, Jesus is just love and open arms and endless grace. I feel new, like new me, new soul. I feel good. <laughs> 